So when two skin surfaces rub past each other repetitively, there can be changes in the skin as a result of moisture and friction that interact with each other. Now this can happen with skin on skin interactions as well as skin on textile interactions. Skin rubs against itself or another surface. There are what we refer to as horizontal shearing forces. This is similar to exfoliation, but it's much harsher, much more persistent depending on the time and nature of the friction occurring. Depending on the speed and location of that friction, the other challenges that heat can develop in the skin, which can also further impact the effect of those horizontal shearing forces on the skin directly. Now, as heat builds up from that repetitive friction, moisture can accumulate in those superficial layers of skin that allow them to become more easily abraded or irritated when friction continues to occur. Now, the result is this maceration or breakdown in the superficial layers of skin that leave it open and susceptible to the impact of other elements in the environment, whether it be bacteria, yeast, or other organisms that can infiltrate that abraded skin. Now, consider Consider shaping in the spectrum of what we refer to as frictional skin disorders, meaning when our skin is impacted by the effects of skin on skin or skin on textile or the environment, there are a variety of changes that our skin can undergo depending on the nature and source of that friction. Friction in the skin results in the potential for a lot of different changes based on the nature, and this could include abrasions in the skin, shaping of the skin, maceration of the skin, which is a breakdown of the superficial layers of skin, where they look eroded. There can, you can form blisters that actually is where that superficial layer of skin separates and fluid accumulates right underneath. Ulcers, skin breakdown, decubitus ulcers, which happen usually on the lower back for people that are bedridden or along the ankles and other pressure bearing parts of their skin, as well as calluses, which is actually when the skin thickens in response to repetitive pressure or friction against it. Now the most common areas that we experience shaping in particular are areas of the skin where the skin rubs against itself and can often have a textile in between, which would be under the arms, under the breasts, and between the legs. In these areas, moisture tends to build as a result of friction from repetitive movement, and it's the perfect environment for a breakdown of skin to occur given the circumstances you might be in. Now, I definitely urge you to understand that even though we talk about a direct skin breakdown from repetitive friction resulting in shaping, there are low grades of friction that happen with some level of consistency that can develop their own form of skin sensitivities. So what many people might consider as obvious with regards to shaping when there's repetitive friction that results in skin breakdown, there are low levels of friction that can be somewhat chronic that results in skin sensitivities. So think about your skin's interaction with towels or bed sheets, these other textile interactions that upon repetitive exposure can trigger skin sensitivities that we definitely need to be aware of because understanding the nature of those textiles and their impact on their skin, we can take some measures to reduce that tendency, whether it means applying products to our skin to protect it and or choosing textiles that are softer in terms of that frictional sharing force to reduce that breakdown of the skin or so think of the basic formula for shaping to be friction plus moisture equals shaping. So let's start with friction. What is friction when it comes to the skin? Now friction, quite simply put, is two surfaces rubbing against each other. Now with regards to shaping, the three most common sources would be skin on skin, skin against textiles, or skin against the seam of textiles, where they come together and that friction that's created in the seam that develops can actually impact your skin as well. Now recognizing those sources and understanding that it's a certain abrasive quality, a harshness to one of those surfaces that can result in more skin breakdown as a result of those horizontal shearing forces can help us navigate ways to reduce the tendency of that friction to result in shaping. Frictional forces from skin against skin can be reduced by understanding that if there is something that lubricates the skin that reduces the abrasive quality of those horizontal shearing forces, we can reduce the tendency of the skin to break down as a result of it. A classic example of this would be things like white petrolatum, a and ointment, desitin. These are lubricating products that are placed on the skin, such as in the diaper area for infants or sometimes under the breast for women. Understanding that having that lubrication can result in decreased irritation to the skin. Now, when it comes to friction from skin against textiles, 
not only can we lubricate the skin to protect it, but we also know it's a little harder to do that because those lubricating factors will be released into the textile and impact the integrity of the textile over time or lead to a buildup of residues in the textile that can impact the way the garment looks. So then we have to think about the way that we can choose the right textiles for our skin or how to manage those textiles. One is to choose one is to choose textiles that have a decreased friction coefficient, meaning when you run your fingers across it. One is to choose textiles that have a decreased friction coefficient, which means when you run your hands over the textile, it doesn't feel as rough to the touch. That softness, that smoothness to a textile will be what your skin experiences as well. And a way to actually treat textiles to reduce their tendency to have friction is to use fabric softeners. Even though this isn't ideal for every fabric out there, it has been shown to reduce the friction coefficient of textiles against our skin. And patients with eczema have in some studies shown to see benefits with the use of fabric softeners in their textiles. Now, when it comes to frictional forces against seams of clothing, this is where design matters and understanding the impact of design on our skin really does have an impact overall. If you have a style that's been designed with your skin in mind, then placing seams in locations where skin does not rub against itself, meaning avoiding placing seams under the arms, between the legs, and under the breast can reduce the tendency for the seam to compound the impact of friction against the skin. So this is where actually looking at seam placement can help dramatically, especially for things like workout clothing that you know you're gonna be wearing in circumstances where there is repetitive sources of friction and you wanna choose garments that have seams that are not placed at those points of friction. So we just covered friction as it relates to shaping. Now let's cover moisture. Now the moisture content of skin does impact the ability of friction to actually trigger shaping in the skin, as well as the severity of the shaping that can occur. Now moisture accumulates from several sources, sweat, heat, humidity from the environment. There could be water left on the skin that was incompletely dried off after showering or swimming. And there can be moisture left in clothing and textiles as a result of incomplete drying. Now to address each of these sources of moisture, consider how you can reduce the tendency for that moisture to develop or impact the skin. One of the simplest methods that many of my patients have found success from is applying an antiperspirant to those areas of friction. So, so we do not have to limit our use of antiperspirants to just under the arms. They can be applied to between the legs and under the breast. By reducing the tendency for moisture to develop in those areas, we can reduce the tendency of that moisture to contribute to shaping of the skin. There are a list of other reasons why you might start to experience shaping at different points in your life that's worthy of taking into consideration because I definitely have plenty of patients that'll come in and they'll say, I've never had a rash like this. What could have been different? And understanding that each and every one of these elements could be at play can help you navigate the why and how to manage or control those symptoms. The first one is age. As we get older, our skin does get thinner. And when it gets thinner, it's more susceptible to the impact of shearing forces against the skin. Many of my older patients will say that they bruise easily, for example, and this is a structural change to the skin that allows it to bruise easier, but also impacted by shaping as well. So the friction that they experience from walking or exercising can have a faster impact on their skin than when they were younger. Gender can play a role, hormonally speaking. Sometimes there can be added heat or moisture that develops in the folds from hormonal changes. Skincare products, and this is happening much more commonly these days, especially even in areas you may not have always thought about when it comes to shaping, such as the base of the neck. Many skincare products, anti-aging products in particular, do work by exfoliating or drying the skin. By doing so, it can result in a higher tendency towards shaping in areas that we don't traditionally think about. Detergents that are left behind in our clothing. So laundry detergents themselves, especially the better brand names out there, do a nice job of cleaning our clothes, but sometimes they are left behind in clothing if you're not carrying out proper laundering practices. What this means is that if you place your detergent in the machine and you've overloaded your machine, then the laundry detergent will not freely flow through the water, through the garments and be released back into the water. Sometimes, especially with certain types of laundry products, 
they accumulate in a couple of clothing items just based on direct contact in the washing machine, especially for those that overload their machines and they put their pot on top of the clothing items and there's barely any room for water to flow through the clothes, then yes, it's going to just find itself accumulated on a garment or two. And that detergent, if it's not completely rinsed out, could interact with your skin and irritate it further. So understanding the need for proper laundering practices, which means when you put your clothing into the washing machine, you want to make sure, especially for front loading washing machines, that your arm can actually clear the surface of it. That means that water can rise high enough to allow that water to actually go through the clothing, get the detergent through the clothes, but also rinse it out so that it's not left behind inside of it. Weather and humidity can play a big role in the development of chafing, and this is really based on where you happen to be when it develops, so sometimes the climate or seasonality does play a role. External heat sources, say for example you're using a heating blanket or you're using a heating pad, sometimes this can build up heat in the skin, and if there is a point of friction, this can trigger chafing a lot faster than otherwise. Temperature and stress can significantly impact the ability of the skin to react to these changes. If there are any skin lesions, skin growths, or hair present on the skin, then you can imagine this will impact the ability of horizontal shearing forces from breaking down the skin a little bit faster. And the duration and speed of the friction occurring based on say exercise or movement can also increase the tendency towards shaping to develop. Once you've experienced chafing, if it doesn't heal in rapidly on its own by reducing that source of friction, it is ideal that you see your dermatologist because there is a chance that there could be a secondary infection in that area as a result of bacteria, yeast, or other organisms entering that eroded or broken down skin that may need to be addressed because if barrier creams themselves are not working, that usually means that there's some other element there that needs to be treated so that those barrier creams can work again. But in general, to try to reduce your tendency towards shaping, to reduce the impact of shaping on your skin, recognize that lubricating the skin, moisturizing the skin, protects it from the actual breakdown or abrasion of the skin, as well as recognizing that decrease in the tendency for water to be left behind on the skin after a shower, as well as sweat to further break the skin down from the outside by using antiperspirants or powders can help and also understanding the role that clothing can play in your skin by choosing textiles that are smooth to touch as well as seam placement that is not in areas of friction can reduce your tendency towards shaping over time.